Hello and welcome back to part five of my video series on making a super simple shooter. In this video series, we'll be adding in some UI and some scores, as you can see from the little demo that I'm doing right now. Okay, so just for before we begin, I've got a little bit of a explanation to do for one of the last videos. Um, one of the comments on YouTube were uh, having a little bit of issues with the explosion. And the reason I wanted to show you this is because it's a really easy fix. So the explosion, the GPU particles right here, um, when we switch emitting, um, sorry, the one shot thing down here, when we switch this on, it usually plays once if you're viewing the particle system. So if you switch this on when it's finished, it actually switches emitting off. And if you save the GPU particle system um, explosion prefab at this point, then it's saving it with emitting sit switched to off. Now, uh, it's a known bug as far as I'm aware. So one of the, uh, it is a bit quirky. It's a bit weird because it really shouldn't do it. And you could fix it in code just on the ready function by setting emitting to being true. but the other way around this is you just um, weirdly go into the script view of any of the other random scripts. So I've still got the explosion seen here and I've still got the GPU particle systems shown. And if I click emitting on right now, then I've still, I've not changed the one shot, it's still there, but because it's not actually playing, it won't automatically switch emitting off at the end. So uh, that was the explanation to fix that. I'm just gonna control S that, and then we can go on to part five of this, which is doing the UI. So UI makes a huge difference to, um, to the video game. Uh, what I'm gonna plan to do is just put this score up at the top here and I'm gonna go very quickly and just show you a very basic UI. And then um, we're gonna do the, one of the more complicated things, which is making sure that the enemies actually uh, increase your score. So we'll start with the, the UI. Um, what we're gonna do is um, before we even begin, I'm just gonna create a theme. Now um, I'll show you what I mean by that. If you uh, want to create any UI element. So if I if we add a child node right here of control, this is your base uh, high level um, sort of like parent uh, UI element. By creating this as a top level um, item, we can add all of the UI elements on it. And I'm actually going to just call it. Um, oh, keep it lowercase. I'm going to call it game UI, um, just so that we can uh, continue with that. So. Well, I'll just spell that correctly with an underscore. So game UI, so that we know what we're doing. Now, if we want every child object of that, um, of this object, all the labels and all the buttons and everything else to inherit a specific theme, um, if we make that theme, we can change uh, all of the items about um, that go with that theme, including the font. So uh, the way you do that is with this theme dropout for the control. Um, this theme dropout has an empty theme. You can just click new theme. And then if you click on theme, it'll give you um, a few of the options. So the default Godot 4 theme looks a lot better than the Godot 3 one. So it's actually not too bad. And you can choose the default font size as well. But I just wanted to show you because Kenny Assets comes with a really cool um, font of its own, I'm gonna just show you how to set this theme up and to save it, and then we can reuse that. So the default font for the new theme that we created, um, I'm going to change this to uh, quick load, the new Kenny vector, the Ken vector future TTF. And that will mean that every item inside my UI is now given this font. The other thing I want to do is just make the fonts bigger. Um, we can change them individually for the elements as well now in Godot 4, but um, I definitely think that it needs to look a little bit bigger. So I think um, let's go with 32. Um, because we're going to be doing uh, just a very simple score label, and um, that's kind of the size that we're going to get, which is which is all right. We can adjust it later. So the the game UI here, uh, the theme can be saved. So um, because I have a theme here, I can actually save it in my resources here. So in, in case I need to reuse it again, and the way you do that is just right here with the little drop down. You can just click save, and it will save it in your resources. Um, if I do that, I'm just going to call it new theme. I'll just leave it in the in the root directory right now so we can see. So this new theme right here, I can double click this and I can change any of the, rechange the fonts or change the default font size, etc. and go, um, go from there. But the main thing that I was doing this for is this main game UI. So the, it's kind of like this square here. What I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to set the minimum 
um, the custom minimum size, so it covers the whole screen. So in my project settings um, under window, I did see that the viewport width was 1152. So I'm going to set the custom minimum width to 1152, just so that it covers the whole width. And the minimum for this, I'm going to set to something like 100. That should be big enough to hold my label um, nice and easily. So now the label, we just add a child node, and I'm just going to search for label. And um, the green ones are all the UI things, so I'll just create that. And we're going to call this um, score label, which is a good name for the score label. Now, the cool thing here with UI is I've, because I've made this one go the full width, now I can use this little anchor preset right here. So I could anchor this to the middle here, and you'll see that it automatically snaps right into the center. Um, and that makes my life an awful lot easier. I'm going to do a default uh, score here. I'm going to do this all caps, score colon, and then four zeros, which will be my starting score. And you can see this is what it's going to look like. The horizontal alignment um, probably want to be center as well. So it takes up the middle. And vertical alignment will be center as well. So that puts it right in the middle of the box. OK, now for the fun part. Uh, we're going to have to do one of the hardest parts, which is making sure that each of the enemies tells the game that they've been killed. The game script itself doesn't really have a score yet, so I'm just going to create that. So I'm just going to say var score. I'll make it equal to uh, zero and um, and save that. So the the score needs to be displayed by the UI. So the game here can see the score label. Um, it's a child of the actual game. So we can just use the dollar sign, as I mentioned in the last video, to drill down into the score label to display what we need to display. So the, we probably should be doing this um, um, at some point within our code. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just maybe write a script down the bottom here because um, we should be able to call this on the ready function um, and we should be able to call it every time we get another score. So I'm going to create a new function. I'm going to call this underscore update UI. And uh, I'm not going to pass in any values to this. I'm just going to use the default score value up here. Whatever this value is, is what we're going to display on the UI. So drilling down into this, I'm going to say dollar sign. And I know I'm going from the game into game UI. So I'll just start typing in game UI. And you can see already that it's guessing that I want the score label. And I'm just going to set the text of that score label to be um, equal to. And then we want a score, colon, a space. And then afterwards, we want to add on uh, the uh, string value for the score integer. So the score uh, right here because i've set it to zero here it's an integer value so it's, it stores a number um, but i need to convert it to a string in order to display it as a print statement in this text element so uh, we haven't called this uh, yet so let's call it so the update ui we should probably call it just right at the very beginning right here so we'll just say update ui in the ready function. So it should call this and set the score label to whatever the score is. So you'll see that it does change if I run this game. Um, you'll see that the score label here has been made into zero. So we're not going to do any padding on anything fancy for this. It's just going to be whatever the score is. If I was to change this score to another, another number and run this again, you'll see it's the same thing. So we know that this works and we know that the UI is kind of hooked up, but we just don't know yet quite how to get the um, value uh, to go up when an enemy is killed. So bear with me as I try and explain this. Um, I'll try and explain it as simply as I can, but we've already done something extremely similar to this. Um, we've used the signals from specific nodes in order to update uh, the timeout and things like that in order to run a function. Um, we can do that with the enemy. So this is an enemy right here. And what we can do is we can create our very own uh, signal. So the way we do this is with our, our own custom signal. So we're going to make the signal just with the signal keyword. And we can call it anything we want. I'm going to call mine enemy killed because that's a great signal name for when an enemy is killed. And then we need to make sure that we emit the signal whenever we want within our code. So 
down here when we've actually killed the enemy, when we know it's a laser and we know it's been killed, um, that's when we can emit the signal. We can do it anywhere in this block of code after here. So um, I'll just do it at the end because why not? So all we do is we say um, enemy killed. I can spell this correctly. So we enemy killed dot emit. I got that wrong again. So enemy underscore killed dot emit. And that just emits that signal um, as we get killed. Now you may be thinking ahead here and wondering how else we can how we can connect this one up. So um, for example, if I look at my game right now, um, if we had an enemy on our scene, so if I go on my prefabs and drag an enemy on my scene, we'll see here this enemy has a potential signal that we can actually use. So this enemy killed signal right here, we'd want to connect this up to the game because it's the game that needs to know that the enemy has been killed. But the problem is we're spawning them in. We could easily just connect them up by, by this method, but the issue is that, um, as I mentioned, we're spawning them in, in code, so we still need to connect it up. And how do we do that? Well, thankfully, it's uh, Godot documentations to the rescue again. So this connecting a signal via code is where you can learn a little bit more about how to do that. So let's put it into practice in our one. You're welcome to go read that in your own time. Now, because we know our game spawns in our enemies um, when the enemy timer timeout, uh, ticks out, the enemy gets instantiated right here. So we have a handle to each of the enemies that we spawn in. And what we should do is we should hook up their um, signal, their enemy killed signal to a script, uh, sorry, to a function on the script. So real quickly, let's write that function. So we're just going to say func underscore on underscore enemy underscore killed. Um, um, spell that correctly. And then I'm just going to check test that it works with the standard print statement. I'm going to just say enemy killed. Um, it's always a good idea to test this before we go any further and make sure that it works. So the key part is actually hooking up that script. So we go into this uh, function. So when we've um, instantiated the enemy, it's then available for us uh, to use. And before I add it to the tree, I'm going to put in uh, I'm going to hook up its uh, script. So the way you do it is we know our enemy because we've just spawned in. It's called enemy, and we know that it has um, it has a signal which is called enemy underscore killed, and then we use the connect, and then inside the connect function we tell it what function we want to use. So it was this one right here. It was on enemy killed. So I'm going to control C that. I'm going to control V in there. Now it doesn't need the brackets. It's just the name of the function in order to work. So it doesn't give me a lot of IntelliSense um, when we do it this way. So I'm not entirely sure. So you need to make sure that you've spelled everything correctly. So an enemy should have the enemy killed signal inside this game. We're using the enemy dot and then connecting to the enemy killed and running this function that we've got down here. So uh, great spelling right there. So let's just test that this works. So we should see enemy killed every time we kill one of the enemies, if we know that it's working. So we can see down the bottom that um, it is actually working. So that way, um, any number of enemies all have their enemy killed signals connected to the main game. So that's awesome. So the last step really um, is the easy part because we've done the hard part. Um, all we really need to do at this point here is we need to make the score go up. So we'll say score plus equals and how much will an enemy getting killed be worth? I don't know, let's make it 50 because why not? And then we update the UI so we can just say update UI. And that should make the score go up every time we kill an enemy. So we'll give it a quick test. Um, we'll see if we can kill an enemy. And we can see that right now, as we play, and as, as we get the kills, we end up managing to get the UI updated every time we kill an enemy. So there we have it. We've got UI and we've got score. In the last part of the video series, 
The last thing I think I'd like to add is that the uh, the game can actually end and we have a main menu uh, that we go back to when we actually get killed. Because right now um, it's not a very difficult game because you can be hit by the enemies and you can continue the game. So it's kind of boring. So a good game has to have a win and a lose condition. So in the last of the series, we're going to just do that.